Welcome back to the channel guys. In today's video, I'm revealing my new build. This is a 10 foot long aluminum jet boat and these things are designed to be tough and resilient. They can navigate shallow water. They can bounce off rocks and logs. If you haven't seen, there's a few other YouTubers that have built jet boats, but I'm gonna be putting my own twist on it with a commonly available Suzuki Hayabusa crotch rocket engine. But to add on top of that, we're gonna be turbocharging the thing. And this is gonna be the most insane thing I've ever built. So uh, to come from building scooters and yard carts to this is just crazy and I got you guys to thank for it. But with that being said, uh, one of my subscribers actually gave me a pretty good deal on this boat. So uh, he actually hand built all of this himself, but it's up to me to completely finish welding it, add the engine, the windscreen and all that stuff. So with that being said guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let's go ahead and get right into it. Hey How's it going? It's going well. How are you? So tell me more about this thing. This whole boat is designed by a guy named, guy named Richard Scrimshaw. Uh, basically he makes scrim jet boats out of New Zealand. Um, I bought the files and I bought all of the designs from him. Yeah, don't, uh, don't uh, hate me on my welds, they're not the greatest. So the whole boat is 50-52. The bottom is 60-61 uh, T6 quarter inch aluminum on that. Uh, I had everything brought in plate wise and then I cut it on a plasma table. My plasma table, not this one, but it was the previous one I built on my channel. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's what the story is behind this one. And everything was press broke from a local company here in South Carolina. Like literally the quarter inch, quarter inch 6061 is just obnoxious. Like most people don't ever do that. It'll absolutely just smash the earth. Dang, that's sick. Going. I hope so, I hope so. I hope you let me know how it goes too. Oh yeah. yeah. This is friggin' awesome. All right, huge shout out to Tyler. All right guys, so Giga Chad Peter came down to visit me and he's actually built a few of these jet boats and he's been in the welding industry for 25 years. He's gonna give me some pointers and tips on how to weld this thing properly and make sure I don't mess it up. So big shout out to Peter from the Zeal YouTube channel. So Peter did some passes and I made sure to watch him and just absorb all that knowledge. I've been aluminum TIG welding for a while, but aluminum MIG is a pretty new concept to me. And then keep that stick out three quarter inch like this. That's your, that's your length right there, you know? Mm -hmm. Don't go like short circuit MIG too close. You want to be, if it doubt, a little bit too long, then a little bit too short. That, that's actually satisfying right there to watch. So a lot of the welds have to be ground down and grooved out. I could probably watch that all day, but anyway, so we got to groove the welds out. Uh, this stuff has been sitting in the rain for a while, so it actually has to be clean. So we went ahead and sandblasted all the seams as well. PAW program. It's for the thinner material. Make sure it's dialed all the way up. All right, aluminum, no matter if your faults or not, typically you always push the weld. You always use 100% argon, not a mixed gas. And if you go vertical, you always go vertical up. There's no vertical down and there's no pulling in aluminum because otherwise everything turns black and sooty and shitty and that's just not what you want. Mm -hmm. MIG welding is an indoor process with aluminum. No more hole in the front. All right, so Peter got the bow of the boat welded. Looks really nice. And I got all the old welds ground down. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of gaps here. We're going to go ahead and fix that. Like 
you guys seen in the title, I'm going to be putting my own twist on this jet boat. So you, you guys know that the theme of my channel is two strokes. <laughs> I was also thinking about a two-stroke. I have a Polaris 600cc engine, 130 horsepower, but that's not the route I want to go. If I want to keep up with Cletus, we're going to need more horsepower. Yeah, you need to turbo that Hayabusa yeah, engine. Yeah, that's... With the Hayabusa engine on there, how fast do you think you're going to go? Like 100 mile an hour? <laughs> It'd be nice to hit even 60, because, you know, there's so much drag with this big boat, right? Yeah, well, then you turbo it, you go 70. Yeah. Leave a comment down below and tell me how fast he's going to be with that Hayabusa engine and how much horsepower you think you get out of that turbocharged Hayabusa engine. And we'll see, I think the pump you have is out of a Sea-Doo. They typically like unofficially are rated like 400 horsepower. We'll see if we get to break that pump or not. How, how would we even uh, dyno tune it on the water? Or tune it? Well, they have like, they have, like fluid dynos that, that you can run them on. Dang. Like st the engine stationary, and really you only have to tune it for full throttle. You got to match the RPMs too. So like with a jet ski, typically a jet ski runs like 7,000 RPMs. That's what the pumps are designed for. Obviously the Hayabusa engine revs a lot higher yeah. than, than 6,000 or 7,000 RPMs. So there will be some uh, gearing and transmission will be part of the build. But well, now I need to build a jet boat so we can both go, both go riding. Yeah. Right? So besides that, I showed you some aluminum MIG welding. But we also have some little challenges here where the previous guy who started this build, we, we have some welds that need to be touched up. Some cosmetic, some structural. We have some removal and rewelding going on here. And then, of course, in that process of removal, rewelding, proper back gouging, this will be a few days and then... Um, I guess you're still waiting on some parts like yeah. the intake. Uh, Rome wasn't built in a day, neither will this jet boat be, but we're making good headway on it. Yep. If I don't see a video on YouTube and I don't see any progress here outside YouTube, then maybe I need to come here again and help them a little bit, but you, you should have it. Yeah. It'd be funny to troll like a, a people and just make it sound like an F1 car on the water. Yes. And I'd be able to launch it with the clutch. I don't know if that'd do anything. If the pump doesn't cavitate, yeah. All right guys, so check that out. I got all of that welded. And then next up is going to be this side. But what I wanna do now, go ahead and finish all of this. A lot of it is uh, has a bunch of low spots. So I'm gonna finish that. I'm gonna grind it down and just see how it turns out. Alright guys, well, we got this upper side done, but yeah, I'm pretty tired, it's pretty late in the night, so I guess I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Alright guys, so if you recall, none of this upper section was welded, so I went ahead and cleaned it out and welded all of it. Uh, we actually want these things to be pretty beefy because we're going to be grinding the other side down flush. When you grind an aluminum weld down so it's flat, that actually takes a lot of its strength away because a lot of the strength is found in the crown and the higher part of the weld. So grinding it down weakens the weld, so that's why I'm just being really careful. Now of course this is way different than steel. Steel you can grind it all you want. Uh, it's a lot more forgiving.
All right, so we got all the low spots filled up. So now we're gonna go ahead and just grind all this smooth. All right guys, so now we gotta finish the front half of this boat and then we can weld the bottom. I already welded the top seam right there, as you can see. What I'm gonna do is grind this bottom one down because uh, these welds did not get enough penetration. They're very, uh, very bad. So I'm gonna grind it down and just re-weld that seam and then as well as re-weld these, uh, well just probably just up to here because everything else looks good. So, uh, yeah. Alright, we got the upper front half of the boat welded. Check this out. I'll go ahead and give you a close-up on some of my welds. Alright guys, so I finished welding the inside of the boat and I flipped it over and now to start on all these seams. This is the critical stuff right here that has to be ground and just perfect. So I actually have to gouge that in so we can get a nice strong weld in there. So all of this has to be cleaned with the grinder. This, this is about half a, probably half a day's worth of welding right here. I really wish it wasn't like this. I really wish it was all done properly, but uh, that's just what I had to do to save money and uh, we did get this thing for a pretty good deal but yeah so we're gonna go ahead and start grinding I don't know how much of this I'm gonna record because it's getting pretty repetitive Alright guys, so I got most of the jet boat welded out and unfortunately I did run out of wire so we're going to have to wait for a new roll to come in before we can even start uh, to work on this thing. But here, as you can see, I basically just laid everything out, a crude mock-up so you can see what's going on. The cowl right here, this will need to be trimmed and fit and welded in from the inside and outside. I'm just so excited to see how this thing comes along. I'm super happy with the progress in this video. Of course, there was just a lot of grinding and welding I didn't show in this episode. It was uh, very tedious and anyone that's thinking about building one of these from scratch, there's about two, three thousand dollars worth of labor that goes into these things and I highly suggest you rethink that because it's, it's hell, it's hell. Um, now this is a two-seater jet boat, it's 10 foot long. So this is considered a mini jet boat, but this thing will handle like it's on rails, especially with uh, how light I'm going to be trying to keep this thing. So we got our Hayabusa mock-up engine in here. I'm probably going to go ahead and just order another engine to have as a backup. But uh, as you can see, it sits pretty, pretty nice and tight in there, although it's going to be a, a little bit higher and bigger with the heads and the clutch. With that being said, guys, the progress of this jet boat series is going to be kind of weather dependent as... You guys see I don't have a shop and even just a little gust of wind will screw up the wells on this thing. So I have to wait till the afternoon when there's zero wind and with this project costing so much money, I probably won't be able to have a shop anytime soon. So super excited. If you are, leave a like and I'll have to catch you in the next one. Stay tuned. Peace and God bless.